So, welcome to another interview with one of our superstars. Uh, today I'm talking to Jeffrey Gerber, also known as the Denver's Diet Doctor. Welcome, Jeff. Hi, Biddy. Thanks for having me on. Uh, just lovely having you here. Um, we'll just get right on it. Uh, who are you? Yeah, so I'm a family doctor and uh, I've been working in the medical field for uh, over 27 years. And in the last 17 plus, we learned a little bit about nutrition and uh, we share that with our patients. Yeah, That's, that, that looks, uh, that sounds nice. Need doctors like you. Uh, what three words would best uh, describe you as a person? So, yeah, not, not even for this interview, but I often re refer to myself as a personal health coach. Ah. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a nice uh, way of thinking about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little jingle. And, you know, again, trying to um, uh, address prevention, wellness, and longevity with our patients. Yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, what led you into the low carb uh, way of uh, life? So it started around the year Y2K, and I, I really have to give thanks to my patients. Ah. And it, it's a typical, you know, uh, doctor story that uh, patients came in and they had read about this diet and that diet, particularly diets that were lower in carbohydrate and higher in, in fat, natural fats. And uh, based on my training, I told patients that that didn't sound very healthy. I thought that they would drop dead of a heart attack. <laughs> We followed their metabolic markers and, and let them do this crazy diet. And lo and behold, they, the patients felt better, they lost weight, and all their metabolic markers uh, began to Im improve. And at that point, I really started to do my own homework and study about things like the metabolic syndrome, hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistance. And it was really revealing in terms of uh, identifying a root cause of chronic disease. Mm. Oh, so that got you going. Oh, boy, did it. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what topic in the low-carb uh, world is most exciting to you right now? So uh, you could probably answer that yourself, but cardiovascular disease is, of course, uh, a great interest because there seems to be a, a conflict between a low-carb diet and cardiovascular disease. And I always like to tell people, if it wasn't for lipoprotein or cholesterol, everybody would be on a low-carb diet because all the metabolic markers improve in every single way, including the ratios of, good, of, of cholesterol when we're, we're trying to uh, assess metabolic health and nutritional status. But yet, in some patients, we see the, this, the LDL cholesterol go up. And um, that's why I like to say, you know, if it wasn't for lipoprotein, everybody would be on a low-carb diet. But um, the more and more we learn about it, we realize that there are better ways to measure cardiovascular risk. So lipoprotein is really a tool to assess cardiovascular risk. And unfortunately, it's a very weak tool. The association is weak. And so rather than look at associative markers, uh, we uh, choose tools that actually uh, visualize the cardiovascular system, such as um, the calcium score or any, um, or any type of cardiovascular imaging for that matter, because it's not a risk factor. You're actually measuring disease itself. And so the idea is that we have to find better tools to address cardiovascular risk and metabolic health is addressed through a low-carb, um, high-fat diet where you're eating real food. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Uh, what is the one thing you wish everyone knew uh, about a low-carb way of uh, eating? So low-carb really defines healthy nutrition. And it relates back to cardiovascular disease, hyperinsulinemia, and metabolic health. And the idea is that we're trying to now ad address things like inflammation, oxidative stress, and advanced glycation through reducing inflammatory foods in the diet. And the, and the particularly problematic foods are the sugars, 
the grains, mm. such as corn, wheat, and rice, unfortunately, or not. And then what we call these industrial vegetable oils, yeah. such as um, canola, corn, and soy. Now, what's interesting is those polyunsaturated fatty acids actually lower cholesterol, but it's taken us 50 years to figure out that they actually increase inflammation and oxidative stress. And so that's why the focus shifts away from the polyunsaturated fats to monounsaturated fat and saturated fat. Now, Biddy, it would be really nice if there would, could be a consensus about diets. Yeah. And there probably won't be for you know a long time. But we, but we tiny, tiny, small steps. I think with, with, yeah. with time, but I mean, it's fair to say that um, processed carbohydrates and processed oils are bad. Yeah. And, and that would be really fun if we could get a consensus on that. Yeah. Um, I, th I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But I can tell by looking at common people, at least here in Sweden, I think that there's a new awareness about this. They are thinking about it. Uh, but uh, they haven't gone all the way yet. But we yeah. have, we're trying to push them and help them, you know. <laughs> so, so it's funny. I, um, I hear about how popular low carb is becoming in Sweden. Mm -hmm. So I always test it like uh, a winter or two ago, I bumped into a couple on the ski slopes in Colorado. And I said, do you know about low carb, high fat? And they said, no, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, those two then <laughs> just those two they they're, they're they need to be informed yeah but we, we'll, we'll get in touch with them okay we'll get right after this excellent <laughs> what would you consider to be a real joy in your life well um i always have to say my family um you know i i wouldn't be who i am today if it wasn't for my family but second to that is educating healthcare professionals i mean that's really my mission and as you know i've been involved with um, educational conferences both uh with healthcare professionals and the general public but offering educational credits and it's really a win-win for healthcare professionals and the general public when we get these educational credits uh to attract healthcare professional it, professionals it adds legitimacy to these conferences and it's it, it brings joy uh, to my face to to see uh, people learning and redefining healthy nutrition yeah mm. uh, so what expectations do you have for the low carb universe well the big biggest expectation is that the official language of this conference in um, Majorca will be English and yeah. not Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. but aside from that, I think um, as you you and Hannah have said, bringing um, a low carb conference to to Europe, uh, this will be the first of its kind, and it's just an honor to participate. And and I always use these conferences as a excuse to travel. And to see the world. Yeah. Have you ever been to Europe? Um, I've been to London and France, and I'll be coming out in June for the um, PHC conference, yes. um, mm -hmm. which is coming up uh, in next month. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, but but, but Majorca, I'm going to love it because it's just marvelous. So it okay. looks great. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Jeff. It was uh, super great to to talk to you again. It was like one year ago we met. Right, it was on the low carb. On the low carb. Yeah. And I hope we have the opportunity soon to meet again in person in November. We we will surely have that. Yes. So, th thank you very much, and uh, take care, and uh, we'll get in touch before November, I think. Thanks, Biddy. Thank you.